Hey there. Uh, welcome to another episode of uh, Weirdly Wired Women podcast. Um, I've been internally calling this the very special episode because it reminds me of those, um, you know, very special episodes of like Facts of Life and all those shows that were on when I was a kid where it was a more adults topic or a more serious topic, I guess. And in most of those cases, adult, you know, and in this one, it is um, getting your first mammogram. Um, but And the reason, or at least this was my experience getting mine, um, and my breast cancer story, uh, because it is October and, um, and some of this does relate to, um, the struggles that we have, um, if you have ADHD and making medical appointments. So, um, this one is, uh, I dealt with my diagnosis with a lot of sarcasm. Um, so some of that might come out <laughs> in this, but, um, but it is, uh, a little bit of a different topic than I normally talk about. And, um, just, at the top of this, in case uh, you don't listen to the whole thing, this is something that I think is really important. If you do struggle with setting um, medical appointments because you, um, you know, because it's a pain in the neck and nobody likes doing it. And especially if you have ADHD, it's really hard to initiate that task. Um, I am hosting free, free webinar or uh, body doubling or co-working sessions this month. Um, you can sign up. There's three different days and with various times. Um, the link is uh, web, the website Weirdly Wired Women um, uh, slash BB sign up. The link is in the show notes. Um, I just if you if you if you've been putting it off, I hope you will sign up. And um, you know, there's details on the sign up page, but it's just a place where you can go to know that there are other people who are going to be also making medical appointments. It doesn't have to be your mastectomy or oh, sorry, not your mastectomy. God, I hope not. Uh, it doesn't have to be your uh, mam mammogram. It could be, um, uh, you know, any kind of healthcare appointment that you've been putting out, putting off. Um, like I don't need mammograms anymore, which you'll, you know, because I had a double mastectomy, um, but now I do have other appointments that I have kind of been putting off. So that's what I'm going to be using that time for. Um, anyway, there are details on there. I'll talk about it again towards the end, but if that's all you want to listen to and get out of this uh, episode, that's perfect. And I hope you will use it if you think it will help because um, because it's really important that we make those appointments, even though making them actually sucks. Um, it also kind of sucks to go to them, but that's another, I can't actually <laughs> do co-working to help you with that. Um, so about, uh, three years ago before I knew, uh, I had ADHD, um, so this was 2020 in, you know, the middle of the pandemic and I had texted a girlfriend, um, to wish her a happy birthday and, um, and this was a friend of mine from high school and she, um, shared with me that she had just found out that she had cancer and had a double mastectomy and was going to be ready to go through, uh, reconstruction. And I was just not prepared for that. I mean, I still, I think sometimes forget where I am on the calendar and, um, you know, and I had had friends who had, had breast cancer before and it, it, it never quite affected me like it did to find out about um, this childhood friend, maybe because I, when I think of us, I think of us in that young youthful relationship and that's kind of where it is. And so when I think of her, and us, I think of us as those young people who don't have to worry about these things, but but we do because we have aged, and you know now in our forties, <clears throat> these are things we have to be concerned with. So it just sparked, um, uh, it motivated me to finally sign uh, to make an appointment for my own mammogram, which I was years overdue for for my first mammogram. Like I knew I should be getting it. I knew that it was important. I really didn't want to because it sounded like it was really uncomfortable and then I'd have to figure out where to go because, you know, you get the referral, like it's just a process about, um, about COVID and medical appointments and things, but I got in, um, you have been putting off getting a mammogram because you think it will be like the worst thing. Um, you know, it's not a picnic, but it, it was not as bad as I was setting it up in my mind. I mean, it wasn't comfortable, but it also didn't take very long. Um, and it wasn't the nightmare I was building it up to be in my head. Again, not a picnic. And, um, you know, I recommend going and doing something fun after it. You know, go get yourself a milkshake or, you know, a new pair of shoes, whatever. Um, so um, anyway, the the woman who um, who did my mammogram 
had warned me that because this was my first one, I would probably get a call back because they, um, you know, because they don't have anything to compare it to. And so anything that looks a little weird, they're going to, um, they're going to want to double check, right? So that they have established my baseline. And I also knew um, because evidently everybody in my family, and in fact, every woman I know has really dense breast tissue. Um, and I since come to hate that phrase, because first of all, every woman I talk to seems to have it, which makes me think that that's just like breast tissue. And there's like, I mean, I guess there are people out there with less dense breast tissue. I don't know, but it also feels a little like accusatory. Like I'm doing that on purpose. Like I'm making them dense somehow by, I don't know, packing snacks in there. I don't know. Um, so at any rate, I did sure enough get called back for a second mammogram and an ultrasound. And so they did that. And um, and then while I was waiting, they, they looked at my ultrasound results while I was there. And um, the radiologist recommended that I go for a biopsy because of something that they found and they couldn't really, really tell and they wanted me to go for a biopsy. So I went for the biopsy and that was a needle biopsy. Um, and sure enough, the results came back. Um, that I had um, what uh, it's called DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ. So um, it was isolated to milk ducts. It was on my right side. Um, and so then it was a matter of figuring out um, what I was going to do. And so I met with a breast surgeon and um, he sent me for an MRI. And then after the MRI, because they want to make sure that there's nothing else that you know they need to be concerned with. So they sent me for the MRI. After the MRI, I had to go back and get an MRI biopsy because they found some other weird section. And then those cells were like, we don't really know. They're not great. They're not, we don't know. They could turn into things, but they might not. And we, you know, who knows? And so at the time when I very first heard that I got the diagnosis, I was considering doing um, a lumpectomy and radiation. And so they would have just removed the part of the breast that was affected. And as long as they got all of it, you know, and I went through the radiation, that would be fine. But then um, I did a little bit more research and I talked to my friend who had spurred me on to getting um, getting this done and or to getting my mammogram. And I, um, she shared with me her experience and, um, and I ultimately decided that for me, that that was what I, that I would be most comfortable doing is just getting the double mastectomy, having all risk like I mean, there's still a very small risk that breast cancer will recur, even though I have no breast tissue. But um, that for me, that was what I wanted to do. And that seemed like the best option and eliminated most of the risks of me possibly having to go through um, radiation or chemo or something else later, um, at least related to breast cancer. So um, I scheduled that. Um, I had some really fun text conversations with, uh, with a lot of my friends because, uh, well, humor gets you through a lot of stuff. And also, um, uh, because I kind of felt a little weird. Um, I chalked it up to, um, at the time just being so fatigued with, um, with all of the stuff from the pandemic, you know, the school closings and the lack of childcare and, um, you know, the panic and the death and the murder hornets and like every day it seemed like there was some other thing um, that came up in 2020 that by the time uh, the breast cancer diagnosis rolled around for me it was sort of like well of course I mean it's 2020 what else is it going to be and um, and then um, and and so I just figured I was just too um, just too, sh just spent, like I just had nothing else. And then I thought about it a little more and this was something that I did feel like I had some control over. You know, I I, I got to control the decision um, a little bit of the timing because we had caught it so early. Um, not a lot of the timing, but so I, I, was, I was thinking that maybe it was that. Um, now, after I've gotten my diagnosis, I realized that it's probably a little bit more that um, I went into crisis mode and, and you know, um, a lot of people with ADHD tend to do really well and seem really pulled together and organized and they'd like, give me a crisis. I can deal with that. Make me make that stupid appointment and I will drag my feet forever because it just seems impossible, but some, <laughs> somehow more impossible than going through a major surgery. Um, so 
I was going through all of that and, you know, feeling a lot of complicated feelings um, because I had put it off so long and I was very fortunate that I still caught it early in spite of like my own best efforts to screw myself. And, um, and after my mastectomy, I mean, don't get me wrong. Recovering from that is not, um, not simple. I mean, it, it is a major surgery. Um, I of course, however, did not think of it like that and expected myself to be much better, much faster than I was. And I was fatigued for like a year. Um, but in the end, um, recovering from the surgery and even the reconstructive surgery, um, was pretty minor compared to what I could have had to go through had I not found it early and, um, what I know other people have gone through. So I felt some guilt about that. Like I feel like I got off easy, which sounds weird when you realize, like, I recognize that that sounds weird. I had a, a massive surgery and had, you know, part of my body removed. So like to act like that, so oh, I got off easy is, um, is weird, but it, it, it nevertheless, it is, um, I did feel that. Um, and, uh, and, and then I also felt weird about, um, about this vernacular that's around cancer and being a survivor now, um, because of when I caught it, I was not, um, not really at risk. I mean, of dying at that time, had I let it go and it had gotten further along, um, yes, that would have been a very real possibility, but because we caught it so early and the, um, the, the survival rates for catching it that early are basically a hundred percent. Um, I, I don't feel like I survived something. So it feels weird to me to say that I'm a cancer survivor because I don't, I don't, I didn't experience cancer in the way that a lot of people do. And it's in a much more horrible and life altering way. So I carry some weird feelings around the words like survivor as applied to myself, but I don't know how else to, to really talk about it. Um, because that's, that is what, what people use. And, and I've had this conversation with other people and they're like, but, but you did technically. And, um, so yeah, it's a, the language is weird. Um, but what I, um, what I really want to share with this is that, um, that you shouldn't put off making your medical appointments. Um, that, that's not to say that I would not have gotten cancer had I had all of my mammograms lined up because I had, I mean, if it was in the cards, it was in the cards, I was going to get it. Um, and luckily my first mammogram happened to be the situation where that was the stage where they would have caught it. So perhaps had I been getting yearly mammograms last year, enough, the, the year before nothing would have shown up. And then this year something did. And so getting those um, preventative care things don't guarantee that nothing is going to happen, um, but it does help make sure that if something is happening or is going to happen, that you catch it as early as possible so that it is at its most treatable point. And, um, and I know because I put off some other appointments, even though I'm saying this and I know that preventative care is important, I, you know, am slightly overdue for a couple of appointments, not years, like a month or two. Um, but it's hard to get on the phone and make that phone call. And if you have to battle insurance stuff or get referrals or, you know, the person that you need to talk to isn't there and you have to call back, it just becomes this, this hugely daunting task. I mean, it's a little better if you can do things online, but even so, even this thing that seems like it should only take a few minutes to, to do, even if it does only take you a few minutes to do, it seems like it's going to take a lot longer. And so it can be very daunting. And that is why, um, this year, I have decided um, that I just, as a public service to any of the women in my community, um, that I will be available for these uh, co-working sessions um, in October. That I think it's the, I should probably have written this down so I could read it. I think it's the uh, the 10th, the 18th, and the 23rd. Um, it's on a landing page to sign to sign up. You can sign up for any of them. You can sign up for um, all of them. Drop in and out whenever you need. You don't need to go on camera. I mean, I'm going to 
Like if you're there, I'm going to assume that 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 you're there because you just need a little bit of support. I'll be in the chat though if you want to ask questions or and I'll be popping in and out and probably sharing some of the um the random screen <laughs> screenshots I took of some of the conversations that I had with some friends during this time period and what I was feeling and you know how I was approaching it and um and maybe sharing just some other things that I find entertaining. Um, if you make your appointment and you want to share that, we will celebrate. I cannot dance, but I will do a happy dance for you. And uh, we're not recording anything. You know, this, again, this is, you know, it, this is a personal thing for you um, and, and we'll honor your privacy, but you can feel free if you need the visibility um, to be on camera. Um, again, nothing's being recorded. We're not, you know, this is really just a tool to help you get any um, any medical care uh, schedule that you've been putting off um, in a space among people who know that it's hard, know that it sucks, and are probably doing the same thing, but also recognize that it's really important. And if we all kind of work together, we can get it done and it's not as bad. Um, so please, if this is anything, anything, seriously, if it's, if you've been putting off going to the dentist and you really need to make a dental appointment, sign up for one of these sessions. If they work for your schedule, um, you know, there's no obligation. Again, it's no cost. Just, just sign up and, and do what you need to do to take care of your health. If it's mental health, if you need to make a mental health appointment, please do that too. It, you know, I don't care whatever health concern that you have or have been putting off, um, I just want you to have a space where you can take care of that uh, this month uh, in honor of breast cancer awareness and ADHD awareness. Um, those two can be a little bit of a double whammy as can any major diagnosis with ADHD. So uh, so that's just what I'm doing to, um, I don't know, uh, pay back the universe for, uh, for the gift of an an easy cancer diagnosis after all of my, um, you know, probably attempts basically to make it as hard as possible by not scheduling my appointment early. So um, I'm very grateful for that. I'm grateful for all the friends who supported me and made meals and helped out and, you know, sent texts and cheered me up through the whole thing. Um, and so that is just uh, what I want to gift back to um, my community of people. And, um, and if you want to share it with someone else who you know, also needs to do this, please do that too, because um, again, it's just really, really important that we make sure that we're taking those steps to take care of ourselves. Um, and, and I know how hard and how much of a struggle it can be to actually make that step. So that is the end of this very special episode of uh, Weirdly Wired Women. Um, we'll be back talking about more, uh, more business related things. Um, and maybe though a little bit about how, you know, being, having my own business at the time and working this into that was, um, you know, how I was able to make that work. And, you know, there's other things around it that happened. So I think maybe this won't be the last time I discuss it, but this is the last time I will discuss it in quite this much detail. So um, please, again, the, uh, the information is in the show notes, but it's weirdlywiredwomen.com slash BB sign up. And uh, I hope to see you there if you uh, if you need a little bit of support. Thanks.